This print was mostly focused on uh, on um, uh, debugging and making sure that everything fits together. So we really didn't implement any new uh, features. Um, we did uh, or halfway finished some features uh, as a proof concept. So uh, you now can uh, log in uh, or register and uh, log in as either uh, administrator or user, or the admin. Uh, has this uh, ability to uh, uh, grant licenses to uh, users. So maybe you can uh, log in. Yeah. If you log in as an uh, instructor, then your page will like this. You will see your license and your yeah. entries. So now here, Pepper has no license. And the, the license was given by the administrator. And here is Piper's um, entries. Here, Piper can add his root, which we showed before. And there's a new function called load roots from file, from CSV file. That's what we added newly. And you can edit and delete your uh, log entry. The reason for that feature is that uh, current situation for rock climbers is that they usually have their own setup using either Excel or something else. Uh, so we wanted to have this feature, or it was requested that we have this feature to allow for that system to still exist. Um, so the way it does is that it will go through and as long as it finds, uh, uh, doesn't find something that uh, is you know, similar in date, uh, location, and uh, and root name, uh, it will create a new entry and add it. It will also tell how many it uh, added and how many uh, duplicates from. Because you might just keep adding on the same document. Um, um, so here, if I want to give a Piper a license, I can log in as uh, admin. So here, Jod can see all the instructors from the database. Yeah. And he can give Piper license, like from today to next year. So now Piper has its new license mm. here. Yeah. And uh, we have another function that I haven't shown you is so then has um, three or uh, one three five uh, log entry, but there's some missing, so it's in here. So then has the CS, uh, CSV file from 1 to 7. So now I want to upload this log entries from the CSV file and there's some conflict and duplicated. So we can handle this. We can choose students uh, CSV file and open. 
So we submit it, it can uh, automatically detect the already existing entries and the new entries. So back, there's one to seven log entries. That's the function. Any yeah. new function? Uh, we can mention the, the security part. Uh, the really only thing we have um, done of actual security is uh, password, in that they are uh, um, stored as a SHA. I think it was SHA. Uh, it must say that's clear text at least. Uh, so the, the only. Hmm? The password? Yeah. Passwords are stay, saved as. Uh, uh, so we cannot really know what is. Um, yeah. I think uh, that's it about for the web page. So. Yeah, on reflections or our contributions, um, uh, my wor uh, my part was uh, working on uh, first as a project uh, lead, um, also doing the tech lead during the whole project. Um, uh, as a tech lead, I tried to uh, had to work with and, and sort of provide uh, example code for how we could do stuff because none of us had really uh, worked with. Uh, either Flask or a View, or what with this web page uh, front and back end and server or database uh, setup. So trying to figure out how to do that um, was um, my early tasks. Um, leading, leading discussions in how to uh, break down the task into more manageable portions. Uh, we experienced that that we and gave ourselves uh, maybe two big tasks in the beginning without really breaking them down. So that was a uh, progress to, to work on. Um, but we, uh, I think we uh, both, both gained experience and also learned how to do properly work towards the end. Um, database structure, uh, we did, um, uh, we first went for a denormalized uh, structure that uh, Mongo uh, is meant for our database uh, setup. Um, we did some ch uh, changing back and forth, uh, really eating up a lot of our time. Uh, um, more of that in the report. Um, yeah, so reflections for my part. Um, One thing that uh, we, we learned uh, maybe a bit too late is that uh, we gave ourselves homework uh, to work on uh, towards the next sprint meeting uh, or weekly meeting uh, that uh, ended up with a lot of uh, miscommunication as we were sitting together we didn't develop the same code so we had our separate sort of hubs that we worked on and when we were supposed to merge it so nothing was ready and we had different structure for the various components. Um, but when we started to work together, sit together, we, we managed to hash that, uh, that out uh, in a better rate, at least. Um, yeah. Uh, I still think for this kind of project is that uh, Agile and uh, versus the waterfall model, uh, we're not that, uh, or this group was not as experienced enough to work as an agile we should have reserved the maybe the two first uh, sprints maybe three to just say we're not going to develop a single line of code we're just going to agree on the whole structure because time and time again we had to redo our structure we came to disagreements on how to do it again you have a lot of time uh, some good things with that i think with it is that we uh, we decided to not specialized in front end, back end, or database, uh, so that everybody worked a bit on everything. Uh, I think that helped uh, so that we didn't split even further 
uh, with uh, developing our own part of the project. Yeah, I think that's pretty much mine. Uh, okay. Uh, I basically worked as a full stack developer, like front end, back end, and database for uh, one part of the project. Uh, it is uh, uh, the climb entry part where you can add the uh, edit, delete, or just see the list of entries. And uh, yeah, and I was like, yeah, universal. Uh, I was just uh, uh, developing the uh, prototype of this feature and basically uh, adding that feature to the uh, like one system uh, and uh, other than that uh, I was like uh, tried to give some opinions how we should move uh, on development process for example in the beginning uh, we were trying to do uh, everything together uh, um, and we decided to like we didn't have any enough skills and we decided to uh, split up the features and uh, do these features and at the same time the learn features because we didn't know that we, as he said Python, Flask, VGS, MongoDB, anything and we uh, at the same time we learned and we did that uh, feature and at some point we were supposed to merge all the codes and uh, build a one system and uh, then I think the Agile was like really effective iterations, you know, uh, adding small uh, changes and like uh, like putting in the sprint and everything. And uh, uh, about the development process, uh, I thought like it would be really great if we first vi visualize how the website is gonna work. Like even if it's ugly, let's let's make some some simple. Uh, visualization so that like we can be more focused and yeah this was kind of a bit part of my ideas and uh, my reflection on this is uh, in the beginning in the first uh, first half we didn't have any skills and uh, we uh, we had a limited time we decided to be a separate uh, which was kind of I think took time uh, but uh, it wasn't really agile I think uh, but when uh, we uh, merged all the code and we had one whole system which was like understandable for everyone then we started like iterations you know uh, adding some feature changing something and like we had more clear like uh, vision and then agile started working and I think the uh, the communication also plays its role like uh, in the beginning we were just remotely working and then we started uh, sitting together and developing some uh, project and like s somebody doesn't know some uh, how to implement something and for example I uh, I was lacking uh, like the how to like uh, about the project and Biona has like uh, good uh, analyzing skills and I asked Biona how about this how does it should be like something like this and it was like really effective I guess and uh, what what uh, took us time is I think of course this learning and uh, we uh, we I think I don't know uh, we were a new team we didn't know about uh, anything about each other and we were like a bit shy in the beginning I think it, this also like uh, took some time and uh, uh, and like uh, uh, one reflection else is like in Jira, we, we, we don't really have a like, real picture of how the things went because of uh, like, uh, bad approximation, I guess. And uh, we didn't really uh, like enter the uh, time consuming stuff like bugs. Not all the bugs are included in Jira, but I think uh, what uh, I would do next time is like always at the like even if it takes like half uh, 30 minutes or one hour always at the, the zero so that it may be more uh, transparent uh, how the things are going yeah and, and, and uh, like one more thing is like I really like the sitting like five hours at the one place uh, everyone is like working on their own project and uh, like it was really effective I guess because I could ask the question and like other than like other than Stack Overflow, like sometimes doesn't work. Uh, you can just uh, ask uh, your uh, team member and just solve it uh, like uh, like 
really fast. Yep, uh, that's all uh, I wanted to say. Yep. Okay, uh, I took over the post of the project leader in the middle of the project, so I focused more on the Jira issues and the structures and our progress that we complete and how much we left. So I have a whole, a pretty whole concept of what we uh, of our project. And for the website, I worked uh, on the license part. I actually, I really appreciate our uh, work method uh, to work on every part of the website from the front end, back end, and database. So I can have a whole, a pretty complete understanding of um, how a website is really built up. And then I test uh, our uh, every function of our uh, project and found some bugs and ask the corresponding team member to fix them. So actually there is uh, a box in our website. Uh, and I record all the meeting minutes in the confluence. And when I look back, actually I really um, impre impressive that we can finish our website uh, on this level. So the reflection is um, uh, the bugs mostly occurred for one reason. So ooh, I was stopped by a bug for two days and Biona also stuck by a bug for uh, many uh, for a long time and when I test the website I found the bugs always occurred for this reason. Uh, this reason is spelling. So I find it actually worthless to uh, spend time on this kind of bugs. So we should actually uh, pay more attention on our coding. About code merge, uh, at first everyone has his own um, folder. So after he finished his, ta uh, his task, his uh, code, in his own whole folder, he will then merge it to the master code. But we found it not efficient, so we changed our code merge method that we directly work on the master code. So before we commit our code to the master, we merge the local code with the master first. But actually, there's often some, uh, uh, there is some problem occurs as well. So another problem I want to say is that at first what I do is to worry about if our team was, uh, was, uh, was able to finish this website because we all have no ideas how a website uh, works. Uh, Runa encouraged us it's better to do it first not to worry. So when I really worked on the code, I found the code uh, quite easy to understand and it was not as difficult as I imagined to implement the functions. So next is our remote group members, Henry. that it is only CSV files that are being uploaded. 
It uses the Python pandas library to convert the CSV file into a JSON format. The upload functionality also includes a handling of duplicates, which means that only new entries in the CSV file will be stored. I did not have much prior knowledge with web development before this project. This was also my first time practicing the use of a software development method. At the start, all estimates on how, how much time I would spend on the different tasks were wrong. Clearly, I was very optimistic. I think the sum of development skills and experience in our group was perhaps too low to be able to use the software development method efficiently, at least in the beginning. I could not present I could not be present much myself, but I think we had no more progress when we sat down and worked together rather than working individually. Being mostly unavailable at daytime and somewhat uncomfortable with my level of knowledge on the subject, I did not want to be any bigger burden for this group than necessary. This resulted in me prioritizing delivering work on code and having less focus on the development development method and utilizing the available tools like Jira. Participating as a part-time student can have its challenges, especially in a group project like this. I must express my appreciation to my fellow group members who have been very flexible and cooperative the whole time. I think our two weekly meetings online were a good way to keep everyone in the loop and for everyone to have the same understanding of our progress and what challenges that had to be solved. When it come to, comes to my personal sense of achievement, I feel I still have a long way to go before I can be a productive web developer. But when it comes to the learning outcomes listed for this course, I am more positive. I think every one of them are, at least to a certain degree, accomplished. Questions? Oh, sorry. our journal chart for the last print. Any questions? Just in a nutshell, if you have to do it again, just say money shots before what you will do the print. Not a job. Not a job. I would uh, start with uh, more planning on how to uh, create a little more documentation than maybe was necessary. But again, uh, some of our uh, bugs and mistakes uh, were really showing when we didn't have something to look for. So we did a lot of mistakes there. Um, getting familiar with automated testing would probably also be a very good uh, item that we did not touch on at all. Uh, mostly because pretty much all tools we start to use uh, this, uh, this uh, in this project were new for us. Mm -hmm. uh, so learning Jira, learning uh, Bitbucket, learning all these tools. Yeah, I think that's uh, one part of it at least. I, I really like the idea like sitting six or seven or five hours together and making like getting uh, things done. Uh, it was more, way more effective than working remotely. Yeah, this point has come from multiple teams, right? Yeah. Communication really helped. Yeah, you. it's really that helpful. That is also, I mean, it's also advised from a agile point of view yeah. so that the yeah. member should be co-located. Yeah. yeah, and I think like we we developed the core. It's a really big project, and we developed the core. I think well, some things maybe was wrong, but I think I'm kind of uh, good uh, that we like accomplished, like finished some.
core part of the project. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, I really enjoying the process from failure to success. So I think uh, our progress is quite normal. Mm -hmm. From actually, we don't communicate a lot before uh, mm -hmm. in, at the beginning, and now we just uh, uh, quite uh, finish this website quite quite completely. So uh, I really appreciate. It. How was uh, it to take the role of Scrum Master? Because if I remember, many of you people were reluctant to take that role. So how was it finally when you took it? So that others will also know that it was not that bad. Because Biona uh, showed, showed, showed very frustrated uh, that time. Mm -hmm. So I think I can do that for once. And it's just a half, mm -hmm. and I can try to be a scrum, scrum master. So, did it substantially increase your load taking that role? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think it's quite. Yeah. Uh, it's quite. Uh, it gave you uh, much many opportunities to uh, understand how the group works. Yeah. Mm. And to see the overall picture. Yeah. 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 Any other questions? Yeah, why you have so many added tasks just after you started the sprint? Uh, I think the, um, the biggest bump here, uh, I think, is the uh, adding of a license for uh, administrator. So we created a main uh, role this oh yeah. sprint. Yeah, but the early? Uh, this is also a combination of two sprints, so we really should have like stopped here. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and at the some point, uh, I was like developing the prototype entry, and uh, I w I wanted to add it, but the model part, like it, uh, when the button uh, button was pressed, model part didn't uh, really work, and I think this, uh, at this point we had to uh, really change uh, to the different structure, like opening the other page when the button is clicked and changing a bit structure. So did it? Yeah, because a whole system was working perfectly, but when we added this part to the uh, system, uh, that feature to the system, the pop, uh, popping up model didn't work. Like, like I tried like probably t one or two days, it didn't work, and we had to okay, let's just uh, erase it and work the other way. So let's open the other page and uh, like just adjust it to this feature, like and then. It So yeah, we are the uh, AR setup group uh, with the, uh, the AR up with trolls. Mm. <coughs> um, can do a quick demo first? Yeah, please. we can show to them. Uh, so this last print I've made consisted of like uh, getting everything to work together. Uh, also the like uh, the AR even marker detection was like finished this print. Uh, so. Uh, what that means is that uh, you enter like this AR core session, and then every like five seconds we check for, we read the, the image data and we check for like an AR Hugo marker, and then we try to translate the position of that marker uh, into the world space in AR core, and so then we know where the marker is, and then we load in a uh, configuration from the server, uh, which is where uh, the model is in relation to that marker, also based on your GPS position. 
and then it uh, renders a response at uh, model in the configuration. And then you can edit it, or if there's no configuration, you can create a new one, uh, etc. So yeah, I'll just try to get this up. So we can see that it will, after some time, it's a bit, we have to admit a, a long buffer before it checks for markers at the moment. But it should, it should detect the model there, yeah. And place the, uh, yeah, the uh, troll accordingly. So if you open the model menu and change the model, and yeah. it's so we can have this here. So yeah, it's still, yeah, the models here all have a bit of a different origin, so it looks a bit weird, uh, but it's because of the, uh, the models. Yeah, we haven't used any like professional or uh, models or anything, we just download some of the internet and they have some different uh, origins within the same bounding box. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So how it is right now, we, we, s we initiate, we sta instantiate the model uh, relative to the to the marker, and um, what has been like the focus this last sprint has been to um, integrate the like backend stuff. So it could uh, it could be possible to load and have different saves, and it would consider the location you're in, like the lat from from the GPS, and also the the marker ID. So you could have like a place with different markers with different models that would do different stuff. Yeah. Uh, one issue we had uh, was that the marker detection uh, sh could be done automatically through a library called OpenCV. Uh, it's a computer vision library which can detect these markers. Uh, the library we used in uh, Unity didn't have the feature which returns back like a, a world point where the marker is. So it has that inbuilt, uh, but the, we used like a pre version edition which didn't have that feature. Uh, so we knew that we can fix it pretty easily by just upgrading to like a seventy dollar asset on asset store or something like that, uh, which we didn't do. We just made like a sort of um, uh, yeah, like a hacky solution for that issue. So we just used the point cloud in error core uh, and assume that you are looking at the marker filling the whole screen when it detects it. Uh, so, but that part could just be changed out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so it's a it's a hacky solution because we wanted to have the whole loop and the whole pipeline, uh, mm -hmm. which we just figured we, we wanted to have it this way just so it works, even though it will give some inconsistent results when scanning markers. Yeah. And then we knew if we wanted to, we can upgrade to the paid asset and fix the issue very easily. Uh, this task was also pretty, we talked about it a little bit the last sprint, it was like a huge gap in the burnout chart, if you remember that. So we talked about uh, the maybe that we didn't split the task up enough uh, or something like that. And we saw the results of that when we completed uh, that task. I think uh, that task was blocking a lot of other uh, stuff. Um, uh, uh, since it was like a big eight hour task, uh, when it was done, like almost all of the other tasks was finished immediately after. Uh, so yeah, we probably in hindsight should have split that task up in the last sprint, um, uh, maybe in two and then work on half of it each. Which probably would have been a little bit more effective. Yeah, that would probably yeah. be more effective. Um, so, I, I think, um, yeah, we have been, we weren't too optimistic for this sprint, I guess, so it went pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, we, we knew that we just, like, this last sprint was just getting stuff glued together and uh, tweaking things. So we didn't like set up uh, a huge new feature we wanted in for this sprint because it wouldn't make sense uh, if we didn't get it implemented. Um, but yeah, and uh, for estimation, we, yeah. Yeah, I guess we can uh, talk a little bit about uh, after like every other Tuesday, we um, sat together and planned out the sprint. Uh, and we also did like the inbuilt estimation from India, where you can have a start a session and you go through the task and estimate every task. And I think our estimation has been pretty good. Uh, one thing that we haven't done is to log uh, hours in Jira, uh, so you can like uh, uh, chip away at a big task by logging hours. Uh, we didn't do that, but I think we kind of validated that our estimation was good based on how we finished every sprint. Like, if all our tasks were done in a reasonable amount of time, we can say that our estimation was good. Um, of course, if we didn't complete all tasks, then it would be the opposite. Yeah. Uh, 
And uh, like in retrospect also, we probably should have, uh, but that was an issue we knew for some parts that uh, Richard was sometimes unavailable and we were working, we were trying to mitigate that by working on separate features that we knew mm -hmm. were uh, yeah. possible. Uh, but um, like when we had time to meet up in person, like physically here, it was much better like communication, even though it worked and we managed. Uh, but for like another project, I guess it's it's good if one can have like uh, set meetings that would be. Uh, yeah, I would say that on site, I guess. Uh, I would say that one of the downsides of our project was probably the communications. I think that we should have had more planned out meetings, uh, like in person. We had a lot of meetings uh, remote, uh, which was the quality of those meetings were definitely worse than the ones in uh, in real life. So that's definitely a point. Yeah. Mm. Although um, I, I do work full time, so I can only yeah. be here one day a week, and I'm also working at the university, so it's like it's mm. not always possible to get everyone physically in the same space. So yeah, yeah it would have been better, yeah. but um, like it wasn't really practical. Yeah. So we did mitigate it, I think. Yeah, well, of course, we were aware of that, so we did uh, mitigate it, I think. Uh, one of the things that we did to mitigate those, like on the content where we were working, uh, we created like. Uh, you call them like spam functions, uh, I guess. So what we did was that we uh, built all the, the pipeline stuff first. So uh, you, will, you will basically end up with a bunch of functions that uh, were like um, uh, used where we use dummy data. So we like we pretended to have it instead of the back end. So that when uh, Richard had time to implement his work, he could just go through and look for those to do uh, in the code and just implement like change these hard coded values to uh, fetching it from his uh, back end. So, so that was one of the things we didn't do. Uh, to mitigate that, we didn't communicate all that well, or too often. I mean, it was perfect for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, the, you set up a system of uh, building trolls into bundles. Uh, yeah. In the Unity game engine, that's basically like a self contained asset pack mm. that you can download. So we, um, we mocked out different implementations. So we have mm -hmm. one uh, where we we load locally from the streaming assets folder where you can just download. Mm -hmm. um, and we have a registry saving system now. So we have like this, uh, I guess we, we started calling that a proxy, but it's more like a facade. So we have a simple yeah. get and put rest of the interface. And then that just stores it uh, in the local registry. Um, but it can also work by connecting to a remote host or a local host, which is a web API. Um, these are the trolls that we wanted, so we added some things into the data model which needs to be shared between the server mm -hmm. and the yeah. client. Um, so we, we put things in like, uh, where is the model, what version is the model, what's the checksum, what animation triggers do you have? So the idea is when you put them down, the trolls will actually be animated. Uh, though I think uh, we could have communicated a little bit better about the, the data model and dependencies. Because um, in the data model, um, you were working purely in Unity, so you were working with um, the position orientation group mm -hmm. and the scale. Uh, and that's compiled within Unity DLL, which means that the server needs that as well to deserialize. Um, and the serializer can't deserialize Unity types. So um, I pulled in another version of .NET's uh, Newtonsoft serializer that works for JSON. Um, and that had some custom converters, but then that broke um, Visual Studio 2005 um, because it's a DLL. And um, so it's kind of, I've got, I've just put a blocker in now. Like right. for future work, uh, we need to tidy up the model because when we have dependencies, on external APIs, particularly when they're compiled, and we can't compile them, you get all these problems about, you know, what environment was that DLL built in? What dependencies does that DLL have? Does it conflict with your DLL that another DLL depends on? So it is a little bit of a hassle to do everything yourself and to make your own quaternion classes and whatnot. But it does save the kind of uh, you, you don't have any links to any foreign code, which is a preferable. Uh, Otherwise, you get that sort of thing. Uh, but you know, the the application works. Like we have the um, 
facade, we have the, the local loading and saving and the remote uh, loading and saving. Uh, so I, I think the integration went um, pretty well. You know, yeah. it's, it's what we need. Um, I, I guess we just need to make changes to make it into a proper application, but that's beyond the scope. Yeah, like uh, for quality assurance, uh, I can say that we, uh, at least on the front end side, we did like uh, a lot of code reviewing. Uh, I wouldn't say that we did it like very officially. Uh, we tried, uh, we, we did, when we did feature branching, we created a pull request uh, where we, it was available to do like uh, code reviews uh, a little bit more uh, standardized, but mostly we just walked through the code, like sharing our screens. Uh, telling what we've done this time and what we should have a uh, like look at this stuff in the code there that has changed and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, also in uh, like retrospect, we we could I don't think it would suit for having testing here, but we could have had uh, like had pipelines or git hooks that would do linting uh, for code. Yeah, the thing is a point that we didn't really do that much. Uh, and I think that would have been uh, useful for, at least for me, because I come from a bit of a different background than you guys. So I'm not very used to the coding styles of like C Sharp and Unity. So you will, you will definitely see some <laughs> brackets placed in the wrong <laughs> places uh, every now and then and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. that would probably have been a little bit useful to do. Uh, unit tests, as you said, were a bit out of the scope. But there is a couple of mathematical and logical stuff that we probably could have benefited from being tested. I did actually add in a test at, at right at the end just to check that the different, um, the different uh, saving loading behaviors um, behind the facade actually did produce the same results. Um, so that, that caught some inconsistencies between uh, the internals. So that was good. Yeah. And I also, I think uh, for like, uh, our Git workflow and stuff, we have been, we have not been uh, strictly following, but we've been trying to linking things up to the issues. And uh, yeah, you would see that we are more consistent on that uh, earlier on. Uh, it was a little bit slack in the end. Uh, but uh, what we tried to do, which I really liked, was to, um, and it worked on a task on Jira. Uh, if you, of course, did future feature branching and uh, stuff like that, but you also tagged your commits with uh, the task in Jira. So, uh, well now, if that if we would done that throughout the entire project, you could uh, basically, uh, if you're looking at the Jira task and everywhere else, like where where this is in the code, you can go to a feature branch and then look at the tags and then just see very simply where everything is, uh, and then go back to that branch and look at the changes. So uh, yeah, I really like that. I think that was a good idea. Yeah, I I think I was I was involved in pretty much most of the sprints, mm -hmm. but. Um, you guys work quite closely together. I have to say that like, they did most of the work throughout the project and I kind of really blitzed it at the end to, to put my thing together. Um, but I think that just kind of showed that we we did actually kind of scope out the work quite well. So you could work pretty much independently and then like work independently at the end without causing, uh, I guess, friction uh, between the integration points. So um, yeah, I was quite happy. Yeah, and despite that we were we were trying to have good communication about things we wondered about, so we were using Discord pretty actively because it was remote. So yeah, yeah. <coughs> I would go. Oh. Uh, are there any questions? Mm -hmm. Many times presenting, and I know a little bit about what you were doing. But mm. can you just repeat what was your contribution individually? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I can start. Yes, uh, me and Nikolai worked together on the front end. Uh, yeah. So what we did there was that uh, we divided up. Kind of, I think we had a little bit of a pattern dividing up task with uh, me working on AR core and you working with OpenCV and a bit more unity structures and UI stuff. I think that made a lot of sense because uh, I have background working with AR core on Android platforms and AR kit on iOS, so I have a little bit AR experience. And you have a lot of unity and stuff, kind of stuff experience. So I think that made a lot of sense. So I mostly worked with that and I made a little bit of UI or changing like the menu stuff and uh, something like that. Uh, I had a little bit of a learning curve in the beginning as I probably mentioned. Uh, because I didn't know Unity and C Sharp. Uh, so I spent a bit of time on my free time learning it and getting to know it, but I think that didn't take too much time. So you both mostly work together? 
Yeah, so we worked a lot together on the front end. So we were talking all the time. We have the same courses. We're working on the same project at school. So what we basically did, uh, you'll probably see a little bit of gaps in the in the Vernon chart because of that. But what we did was we planned days where we could work together. And there were some days where I worked and he didn't work. And then when he got back working, we had a chat about what I did or what he did. So we had a very good, uh, solid communication right, when it came to that. And, uh, uh, we worked on a little bit separate things, like Google A Core and OpenCV, and then we had to sit down together and like merge it together, make those two uh, components talk to each other, and that, so. Yeah. And how did it work with the backend? Yeah, so the backend was kind of integrated uh, uh, quite late, but uh, as I said, like we created this stuff, uh, this last month, mostly, okay. the big integration of it, yeah. So uh, we created, as I said, this stubs function so that we would create the entire pipeline right to the end where we would have fetched stuff from the back end and then we used the metadata. So when Richard like, came along, he could uh, look up those functions and just implement his uh, like calls to his classes from there. So we basically had to change like four or five functions and then the entire thing just was super. Yeah, so the, the reason we didn't like really require back end yet was because there was so much uh, front end uh, features yeah. that we were working on anyways. Uh, so it was just like not for this sprint actually that we came to the point where this is where we need the call to the backend. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that was when the integration was like... A lot of the work was exploratory, so we, we didn't really know uh, how the data models can be set up. We had a broad idea of what we wanted the app to do and provide to the, uh, to the web services, yeah. but we didn't know exactly how we would go about doing that. So we early on I think there were there was mainly like chats and discords about like mm -hmm. going in the right direction, this is what we found, maybe we should yeah. go in this direction. I would say that there was a quite a bit of unexpected research that had to be done. Uh, so but other than that I think it was quite nice. So, yeah. so you yeah. people were working together and reviewing each other part, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you had nothing to do with the back end. No. Uh, no. So how the quality control of the back end happened? Uh, I would say it wasn't uh, it wasn't too much weight on that actually. So mm -hmm. that's not probably a downside that we haven't done too much at the back end. Uh, I guess it could be. I mean yeah, I mean yeah. in this in this sprint we did take time to kind of uh, do some remote code sharing and talking about it and kinda of asking questions and walking through the files and just yeah, saying like Yeah, so we had a code review session like this sprint about some back end features. Mm -hmm. uh, but we haven't had anything like before that, so we probably should have I guess talked more about that earlier, or but at least um, yeah, I don't know if it was like required yet either. Uh, no, no kind of. I I guess. Why do you say that we don't? You don't know whether it is required yet. No, not like yet because we are we are we haven't like used been using that part of the application yet, but we. Um, I don't know. It seems like it would have been an unnecessary, inefficient use of time for me. Because like, if you guys, if we kind of like segmented the work and we're talking about what how our code integrates together, if they're both working on the front end. They have to work very closely. But if we have just have this kind of like narrow API that we need, yeah. uh, but like like you, that you stub out and define and just kind of get this is what we think we need. Yeah. And I I do the implementation. Uh, for the registry and the remote, um, and then I just provide a very simple facade to them. It does minimise the need for communication as long as it provides, as long as the abstraction provides the service that they need. Um, but it, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, if, it to, if the goal was to kind of share learning through coding examples and stuff, we could have did that early on rather than at the end. But yeah, and also the, the data is quite simple, really, what we're passing back and forth from the server. It's not like very complicated, it didn't require too much discussion, it's mostly just like uh, vectors describing like distance and uh, rotation mm -hmm. and ID and name is not really, really not that much. No, no. So, so yeah, so we, uh, because they do it using, um, they have their own implementation, I just write a little bit of glue code to copy from the, um, the data messages into uh, what you want to provide, but that's all kind of that's largely hidden in the simplified view. Yeah, it's just a single function. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I guess as well for me, 
working like I guess the most separate things is that uh, Morton worked on AR core things and I worked on OpenCV things. Um, and also in the OpenCV world, there were some like a lot of research and issues because, mm -hmm. um, like the um, the um, assets, yeah, yeah the, like the asset that we were using for OpenCV. Uh, was not really up to date and it was not being uh, worked on anymore. Mm -hmm. So it, it gave, caused some issues because there were some features that is in OpenCV but that weren't available to us. So um, you had to implement them yourself, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there weren't a lot of time used on like researching and seeing other options. So mm -hmm. yeah. We also had to grant downgrade the project, which means you doesn't support uh, because yeah, my computer has so many Git projects our entire production pipeline uh, that we're going to use this for is built on one version of the Unity DLL. It's like wh when they've gone for the latest code, I was like, we can't use that, so you have to downgrade. So we we, yeah. I, we, we did. Uh, there was a few little bumps like that just to make sure that we. And I think the, the reason for it. upgrading at all was because uh, there's a thing in Unity which they've created, uh, the Google Air Core SDK, uh, which is called Instant Preview. Uh, which basically enables you to look in the game view of Unity uh, without like building your project and compiling the APK and installing the APK. You can just run the program through the game view of Unity and then look at uh, what you can see through the camera of your phone, basically, if you have a company. Yeah. And we had some very large issues with that. Uh, Instant Preview showed us one thing, it everything worked, everything was perfect, and then we disconnected our phone and built the project, and then nothing worked. So we got inconsistent <coughs> results between uh, Instant preview and uh, the pre uh, built version. Uh, so what we did, we thought that was because we used the newest version of AR Core, but an older version of Unity. So we tried to upgrade Unity to match the versions, and then um, uh, still didn't work. <laughs> but then we figured it out another way, uh, and that we didn't downgrade again. So we had to do that later. So yeah, mm. so yeah. some some minor yeah. dependencies. Mm. Any other questions? Thank you. Yeah.